Hello, my name is Mark Garner. I live in Hamilton, Ontario, which is my first home. Uh, I am a local historian, but I do a lot of West Coast historical research. British Columbia is my second home away from home. I spent a lot of time in British Columbia. I've been up and down the coast. Dealing with what I specialize in is the 1800s Hudson Bay Company stuff, especially related to that of the SS Beaver. So my obsession with the SS Beaver started when I was five years old. My grandmother had sat me down and she went and got this old purse out of her, out of her bureau and she opened it up and pulled out this little powder tin and showed me this metal made out of the SS Beaver. And I was intrigued. At five years old, it's amazing that I can remember it like it was yesterday, but I had the metal in my hand. I remember holding it and she telling me the story about the beaver and how this this metal was made out of this sunken boat. And I thought that was the greatest thing. And I've always remembered that. And it was 20 years later after the, the passing of both my grandparents that I eventually got that metal. And that's what began my whole collection. But since I was five years old, I was always intrigued with this idea of making a commemorative metal out of a sunken ship. And it's interesting because with the SS Beaver, that was the first production steam engine in the world. It was the first steamer to cross the Atlantic from east to west, round Cape Horn, and be the first steamer on the Pacific. And Charles McCain, which we'll talk about later, was the first one to make commemorative medals out of the SS Beaver. So that's how the whole collection started 45 years ago, and it's, it's just grown, and it's, it's been quite an interesting journey since then. So the SS Beaver collection is, is really unique in a lot of different ways because when the Beaver ran aground in 1888 in Vancouver, Charles McCain moved from where I live in southern Ontario to Vancouver. And what his plan was was to take a lot of the brass, bronze, and copper off those steam engines, melt them down, and make commemorative medals. Now that first medal that I got from my great-grandmother, that was one of those medals, and that's what got me started in the collection. So I started researching and hunting and looking and reading, looking for more, more SS Beaver related items. At the time, I didn't know that there was actually three different medals that were put out. And Charles McCain actually wrote a book in 1894 as well, detailing history of the Beaver and his personal story, which gave a lot of detail on the production of these medals and keepsakes and whatnot. But Charles McCain wasn't the only one that was gleaning materials from the wreck because it sat on shore for four years. Many people would go down, they would picnic on a Sunday. Many people would go down with saws and axes and whatnot, and they would hack and slash because it had the best African oak and teak and, and, and all these high quality hardwoods. So people would make walking sticks and picture frames and cigar boxes and tables and chairs and, and, and you name it, any small trinkets made out of wood, people would make them because it was such a high quality wood. So the, the collection has really grown to so many different types of pieces that are actually from, from the wreck. I've got framed pictures that actually have rope off of the wreck and copper fasteners off the wreck. Original photographs are a big part of the uh, history. It's very hard to find photographs of the beaver. It was in service for over a half a century. Its first photograph wasn't taken until halfway through its life, probably in the in the mid 1860s but trying to find photographs you know can be tricky too so finding these old photographs and and these old books that McCain made and these commemorative medals and walking sticks and assorted things made out of wood it's really quite a large collection of things that can be found and things that can be had related to the beaver but it's got such a rich and colorful history relative to the development of the west coast as we know it so it makes it such a a fun thing to collect and hunt out because there are there are so many possibilities of things that can be found related to the beaver all right so my ss beaver collection is quite a comprehensive collection regarding all aspects of the wreck i do have original artifacts I've got old wood and rope, as previously mentioned. I've got a large number of original photographs, old frame photographs, and of course all the McCain-related commemorative medals and books and things like that that I've been, you know, searching out for for quite a long time now. So I've got a, a good quality collection. I've got models. I've got assorted different things that really make a nice display as well, and some some larger artifacts. But anyways, what I do is 
is accumulating these things. I wanted to make it known and I wanted to make it available to other people to see because I haven't yet found myself a, a building to set up my my actual SS Beaver Museum. I created the online virtual museum through the Facebook forum because I know there's a lot of people on there and being a private group it can really you know entice historians or, or, or people that are interested in this early British Columbian history on the coast. So I created the SS Beaver Museum on Facebook and anyone's welcome to to request to join to that. It is a private group but over the last couple of years I've made over 400 posts using this collection. I wanted to utilize each individual piece of the collection. I would go through and I'd photograph, I would take information and details, I would share historical documentation, old pictures, old stories, and a lot of, because it's interesting too, because Charles McCain, the one that made all these commemorative medals, I found out after the fact that I was actually related to him. So it's become kind of a passion as a, a family tree as well, because having relation to McCain, making all these things related to the beaver, gives me that extra drive wanting to collect these things. So having them and wanting to share them, I figured the, the Facebook museum was a perfect opportunity to do so. So I've got over 400 posts with individual items and I'll give a little brief history and some of the, the, the unique characteristics of these individual items. So it's not just sharing the museum collection, but it's also enticing or, or educating those that want to collect on what to look for and, and different details on these items which make them much more desirable than maybe people would, you know, at first, first take think that they would have. Many of my books are inscribed by the author and things like that make it, to me, a lot more enticing in terms of having a collection uh, of these valuable items. So having them on Facebook, it's been nice to be able to showcase so many different aspects. You know, if you can take 400 pictures of one collection, it's got to be sizable and there's got to be some good information there. But I always change it up. I don't repeat all my posts. I, I make things new and fresh and find new historical information to back that up with to make it interesting for the reader as an online virtual museum. So that's how I manage the collection of what I have. The collection's always growing. I'm always looking to find more for the collection. But when I do that, it usually helps enhance what's already there. Because sometimes it'll add information to what I've already got or, or bring new information, new light to the collection. So I find that a very good proactive way to share the collection as an online virtual museum. So in terms of the SS Beaver collection and all the items that I have, I'm always looking to buy and add to the collection, which, which is a, a slow process. I, I'm always checking online auctions and things, and sometimes you can find you know, a piece every other year, and sometimes a whole number of things can come out of the woodwork at a time. But I'm always slowly progressing in terms of adding and building the collection. I've never sold anything out of the collection. Uh, only on one instance I've traded an item and a couple times I've donated items, but on the most part I'm just uh, a buyer, I'm not a seller, and uh, I'm buying it for, for, the collection, for the collection's sake, not for, for any other retail or, or business related outlook. Now I really enjoy collecting the SSB for stuff. And a lot of people say it's a thrill of the chase when you're collecting. It's that hunting down these items and finding these bits and pieces and adding to the collection. When I first started over 25 years ago, it was actually very hard to find stuff. There was very little on the internet. There was no information out there. But with time, as technology grows, it's actually made it a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable and fun for the collector because you can put search criteria is within all these online auctions, within Marketplace, within eBay even, you can get daily updates, daily notifications, hey, there's something related to. And on sites like eBay, you can put, I've got, I think, 30 different search criteria, whether it's Captain McNeil, SS Beaver, West Coast Steamer, that there's so many possibilities that you can do a criteria search on on so many different platforms. So if, if you're looking to collect and you want to find these things and you're discouraged because, well, I can't find it. I've been to all the antique shops and I can't find metals or books or artifacts. It's actually getting easier all the time online. So anyone looking to collect, it's really encouraging to know that we've got all these 
tools at our capability where the emails are going to notify me that there's something available. I don't have to search as hard and look for it and feel discouraged about that. So the, the, the sense of collecting is actually becoming greater and easier and more enjoyable with time. So obviously I recommend doing that for anyone, but if you're looking to get into the collection, it, it, it's a very easy thing to do. So I'm an eclectic collector of many things. And in the past, I've got so many different collections of so many things. My SS Beaver collection is my main focus, but if I'm gonna give any advice to collectors, there's a handful of things you wanna keep in mind. One, you, you wanna start with a very narrow focus. If you've got too broad of an area you wanna collect or research, you can find yourself going down all these rabbit holes in terms of finding irrelevant information and items that kind of get in your way of making that one good quality collection that, that you're really looking to, to find. So keep a narrow search and stay focused on what you're looking for. And it makes it so much easier when you're doing research because there's so many peripheral areas that you can go down and research, but just stay focused. And you're, you're going to end up finding some really good quality items in terms of what you're looking for and start your collection that way. You're going to have a high quality, sought after, enjoyable collection that doesn't cover too many different areas. And staying focused in that can help you see more items and you can pick the better quality items. You don't want to fill your collection up with a bunch of, you know, depreciated, damaged items. It, it, if you're focused on these things, you may see a couple and you can pick the best one. You want to keep a good quality collection, which is going to increase the value of your collection. It's going to improve your, your personal outlook of your collection and how you feel about that collection. So I feel that's very important as well in terms of having a rounded collection. So staying focused and having a good, good eye for quality when you're looking around. So it doesn't matter what the collection is, it's got to be something that's presentable and something you're going to enjoy. And it is very rewarding to do so. So going through all these things, it, it really contributes to your quality of life in, in my point of view.